Uh, so, uh, Pramod Anantaram, uh, his thesis was on uh, knowledge empowered probabilistic graphical models for physical cyber social systems. Uh, he was graduated in 2016 and now he is uh, working in Bosch as a uh, senior uh, applied AI scientist. And uh, this is his thesis statement. Uh, basically, it has two major component, components. The first one is uh, the observations from diverse modalities can provide complementary, collaborative, and timely information about events in physical cyber social systems. And then the second component is probabilistic graphical models with the help of declarative domain knowledge uh, provides an efficient mechanism to uh, uncover and interpret multimodal event manifestations in a social and sensor data and then secondly, explore event interactions and dynamics. And then thirdly, formalize uh, optimal action recommendation in physical cyber social systems. Uh, I will describe these individual components in the next slide. And then uh, one of the major- Can you describe what is physical cyber social system or cyber physical social system? Uh, it's uh, basically an uh, interaction between the uh, physical uh, components like hardware and then uh, cyber means uh, it includes the software systems and then social means it includes uh, integrates the uh, influence of the social medias and uh, what is the physical basically multiple sensors yeah multiple sensors yeah, so, so give me an example of physical cyber Uh, like uh, we can uh, think of a scenario like uh, using a uh, social media data and uh, uh, developing like a system uh, that integrates all the hardware and sensors and like a traffic system can be a, a thing of as a, a physical cyber social system because uh, he also considered the traffic system and also autonomous uh, systems like uh, autonomous driving systems uh, and can be taken as right. but, uh, okay so keep in mind that social the physical side is social doesn't that's the thing in social media that's one mm -hmm. and the uh, other thing is um, so the transportation example is that the cars are physical things right and they are uh, speed and all that there is a cyber, there is a information about traffic and condition, conditions and traffic advisories and all that things in the web, cyber, the social things, people are tweeting about it, people are talking about it, people are saying traffic is too high on this time. That's the social aspect. So, um, so uh, that there is a uh, distinct, uh, you know, manifestation of, uh, you know, a, a system. Physical, you know, world manifestation, its uh, observation about the information on the kind of cyber thing and interactions among them, more human social interactions. Uh, social part. And that's what we are trying to do. Uh, and this was an important topic um, around 2005 to 2010. There was another term, I mean, I, I don't know if it's called Panet, right? Vehicular network or something. People call it Panet. Panet was there. Panet, yeah. yeah, that's just more it's a technical term. This is a broader uh, thing. And all these kind of things come together. You know, building a system that, so, so a cyber, you know, I'm uh, sorry, um, a cyber physical uh, system is uh, a hard, uh, you know, uh, a monitor that keeps your hidden uh, thing. This is physical, but also, uh, you know, cyber is controllable online. Okay. Uh, I think data is going online. So, uh, I think the major difference here was uh, CPS was already existing, cyber physical systems. A lot of uh, uh, networking people uh, and basically IoT engineers have used that term, but here the aspect of social is uh, what is different, I guess. What is novel about
Okay, so uh, at the first of this thesis, he has uh, given introduction to this OODA loop, uh, which is, uh, uh, it is proposed by uh, Colonel John Boyd. Uh, it's basically an approach that can be followed by an individual or an organization in making intelligent decisions. And uh, it has four major components as observe, orient, design, decide, and act as shown in this left up figure. Uh, basically what happens here is uh, we basically first observe the environment and then uh, the actions, the feed forward uh, actions are going towards the orient part and then towards the decision and the act parts. And then uh, in Promote's work, he tries to uh, map these individual four components with his thesis and what he has trying to achieve. So what happens in Observe is that the, uh, we observe the physical environment using multimodal data, like maybe sensors. And then orient means uh, we orient ourselves properly in the context of the uh, physical environment. That means we interpret the multimodal data and then decide means using a model to action, model of action for a particular situation or scenario. And then act means uh, we recommend some actions uh, to be performed in this environment. Uh, so in Promote's work, he basically tries to, uh, he has achieved three tasks like a PCS event extraction, event understanding and action recommendation. So he maps the PCS event extraction to the observed part and PCS event understanding to the orient part and action recommendation to the decide and uh, integrate uh, decide and act parts and that's shown in this figure and then uh, in the the right low bottom figure shows uh, how these uh, observations from the PCS systems are uh, integrated in his system And then he comes towards this uh, probabilistic graphical model. So what are these PGNs? Uh, they, he includes that uh, graphical models are marriage between probability theory and graph theory. And they provide a natural tool for dealing with two problems that occur toward applied mathematics and engineering. That's uncertainty and complexity. Uh, so uh, graphical models, uh, the probability part uh, it's uh, used to solve uncertainty. And then the graph theory, they are used to uh, uh, provide some solutions for the complexity of the data and scenarios. See, um, I just want to provide some context. Um, in my uh, work, uh, semantics was made of the informal formula of the power to, uh, you know, this power to start, uh, you know, as I saw the implications of both your probabilistic things and your symbolic thing. Uh, for me, this was very important uh, and that's where uh, I think the, uh, that's why I want to see this uh, happen. Uh, from the problem, then then we put you know, uh, into some of the things you know. Um, this still remains at least for what I think is supposed to be the best way, uh, you know, to, to combine these two sides. In a very concrete, a very uh, or, you know, well defined way because these points graph models are well developed in the concrete behind the research. Um, so, here you are really probably so connecting all this to the graph. Uh, and so, there are different ways we can bring together the uh, you know, the symbolic and the uh, you know, probabilistic or you know, the part of the thing. So, okay, uh, um, so um, I'm not very, you know, uh, much able to read this bloody picture. Yeah. So you, you got a screenshot somewhere? Or something? Yeah, I got it straight from the YouTube video, his uh, dissertation video. So, it's so not. If you can read for me. <laughs> yeah, it's not available in his thesis. Uh... Oh, fine, fine. Let's let's read. So we have four variables: eta, a. Then what is the second? Yeah, medication, medication m. Why why medication? And what is the you know the implication of medication? Are these so, uh, trying to understand this formula. Uh, so I they think it is. Uh, oh, this is, no, this is an example, I think, related to. Um, so, Cori did the work uh, where the use case was asked. Okay. And um, 
So, I'm not able to understand what communication is. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and Cody was uh, Promo's mentor. And uh, we, uh, he is trying to explain uh, the modeling uh, for that particular use case. Okay. Yeah, uh, so taking that example, uh, the uh, promote shows how PGMs can be used in this kind of uh, problem solving. And he take that the random variables as uh, shown attack medication steps and pollen, and then as joint. A probability distribution uh, taking those uh, random variables and then he designed uh, parameters like four binary variables and there are two to the power four 16 probability assist assignments and then uh, so we, are, we, are, are we talking about joint probability or conditional probability now should we not talk about conditional probability it's a conditional probability he's talking about it's As, medication given Right. Yes, that, I mean, that's the formula says. But you know, when you talk about joint problems, yes. but anyway, yeah. it's, I mean, it's a different task altogether. I think it's saying that the joint probability is given by all these uh, additional properties. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's let's move on. Uh, so he says that uh, the in PGMs uh, we can utilize this probability assign months uh, to deal with the uncertainty and the structure to deal with the complexity so as shown in the uh, bottom figure the structure that this can be used to uh, represent a complexity in a, a cyber physical social system and he used a uh, declarative domain knowledge in his uh, this it is in his project. So uh, he has used four main sources to obtain the domain knowledge. Uh, the open street maps, uh, it, in, it includes the location information and the file of uh, it in, includes uh, event related information and concept, the concept net, uh, it includes the common sense included in information and then the main open data. And uh, the below figure shows uh, how he have used concept not a concept <coughs> net uh, to uh, show the domain knowledge of practice in the form of concepts and the relationships. So this figure I got it from the his uh, paper published in 2013, uh, the traffic analytics using published geographical models enhanced with knowledge bases with uh, knowledge bases. So, so like difference between domain knowledge or knowledge graph or ontology that gives a declarative aspect of that. Uh, what we are that means uh, using knowledge from uh, knowledge basis and the term declarative object. Uh, I think that uh, he has obtained multimodal data from various sources. Uh, because uh, the file one, it includes sensor data and uh, the concept net, uh, they include textual data. So he tried to uh, merge data from many sources and it's multi-model. So it provides a uh, very extensive information than knowledge bases, not just one source. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That's what I think. So, Word has a meaning, right? It is uh, you want as declarative versus declared. Mm -hmm. So in declarative, you are just told this is what you have. Uh, so the what part of it. In imperative, you have said how you obtain that, what is the control flow and all of that. So when you give knowledge, it is declarative in nature. So when you give process knowledge, for example, you are combining declarative. So no, by default, all knowledge sources are declarative. So not necessary. For example, if you give knowledge of a dynamical process, it's not declared. You are describing and spelling out how uh, that knowledge is obtained, what is the control, what speed you should have got it, learning at different points of time, states change, all of that. That means declarative knowledge is more explainable in the sense. Well, that's not the discussion. It's declarative approach. 
that's, that's the definitely what Professor said. Declarative or probabilistic? It does not make sense to me. Or deterministic or probabilistic. So, in formal logic, uh, declarative means that you have declared statements that just tell you what is versus invariant statements that tell you. We certainly use these terms differently in cognitive science. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so uh, let's go to that. I mean, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, but, but you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, what don't want to distract from here. If uh, knowledge is wrong, it is a, you know, it's a big question. I mean, I'm, I'm confused because uh, still we are going again to statistical business. If knowledge is problem, yes. Either knowledge is not problem. Yeah. So the, the here the knowledge comes from three different problems. There is a so the, the example is um, uh, that of traffic in the area. Uh, traffic data on the, the ground is coming from the sensors uh -huh. that give you the speed of the traffic on the individual links. There are thousand something uh, roads on which that maintains that and. Uh, the spatial temporary feedback data from the Twitter mm. data. Plus, data uh, come from the websites, uh, traffic, uh, you know, from, uh, government traffic websites and all that. And then, uh, you know, they don't tell you more, you know, plan, uh, work planning and all that stuff. Uh, sports uh, events, plan, you know, all that stuff. And there are three ontologies or noise graphs. One is, um, uh, the city, uh, a smart city or not. Okay. Uh, there is transportation in taxonomy that uh, they use in that way. And the third is, um, um, what is the third ontology or what is it? Is? I think location center. Oh. Open street. Open street. Just so we can just go back to the slide where you showed the picture of the knowledge. I want to be commenting with the red. The knowledge here is declarative, right? Uh -huh. So these are all you think of the random variables of the graph. Right. So you have a graph as data and you have graphs as a model. Okay. So the graph as a model is a property graph. Is a model. So graph as a model when you are traversing the graph. You don't traverse the probability graph. You compute probabilities based on the kinetics of the uh -huh. uh, probabilistic graph. For example, if you, you have a major network as your probability graph is a model or not from network, you have different methods to compute the probability. So if the row dies a uh, causal active, uh, how would you compute that in a probabilistic graphical model? You would have to compute probability of accident and kill and Right. And with knowledge, you don't compute that when you make probability difference more efficient than declarative. That part is then skip. You compute the rest. So the graph represents the conclusions of that reasoning explicitly. This is all declared. Yep. Okay, so, so this is what I call representation process trade off. So you're stuffing all of this knowledge into a declarative representation. Okay. Uh, just, just in context. So I, I saw a video that one company did. Is actually helping police officers and in a given police station. So they, they go out every day, right, and do some patrol. So they, you know, looking at the previous history data and blah, 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 they predict, okay, you should travel this in this area today. And they predict that they cut down the cost of patrol, etc., effort 40% by doing, you know, AI, etc. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, this is the why part of his thesis. That means uh, he has tried to uh, solve three problems in his thesis. <clears throat> the first one is uh, understanding real world event interactions and dynamics, and uh, which is uh, crucial for informed uh, decision making in many dom domains like traffic analysis, power grid maintenance, healthcare, and system health monitoring. And the second a main problem he tries to solve is explaining the real world events. Uh, so he uh, tries to uh, explain three kinds of real world events as complementary events, 
uh, where one modality source can provide additional information compared to the other modality source. And that means uh, he has obtained data from Twitter and a file of the organization. So uh, the file of it includes uh, basically sensor data and also textual data. So uh, the file of text uh, sensor data includes uh, average uh, speeds of vehicles <laughs> that uh, uh, that speeds of the vehicles that travel through the links in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, the textual data, it includes like uh, incident reports and the event uh, reports uh, that happened or that includes happened or planned events. And the Twitter data, uh, other textual data he has used. So uh, there can be some uh, integration or common events that uh, includes in both of these modalities. Uh, and also, uh, so one modality source can provide additional information uh, compared with the other modality like Twitter data. Uh, and also there can, the second uh, data, uh, the event type he tries to explain is corroborative. That means one modality source can support the other modality source. That means uh, both of these uh, Twitter and file event, they can include the same events at, that happened in the same time. And the timely means, uh, one timely events means one monolithic source may report an event before the other, other monolithic source. That means uh, we can uh, uh, think that we think that there's an accident happened. So uh, people may start reporting the incidents in social media like Twitter uh, before it happens, it uh, records in file one like Thing. So there can be timely difference between these events and uh, their reporting. And also the third uh, problem he tries to solve is uh, how can we provide actionable information from these uh, events we extracted and in order to make good uh, and reasonable decision making. Uh, he used uh, sensor data and textual data. Sensor. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the what part of his uh, all problem that is this situation. Uh, the first, firstly, he uh, tries to extract events uh, from these sources, and the UDA loop equivalent is observed as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so he tries to find what are the events of the interest and how do we manifest in uh, how do they manifest in the observational data? That means the sensor and the textual data. And how can we infer events from these observational data? And then uh, what's the role of domain knowledge in the event extraction? Uh, I will describe in later slide how he has uh, formulated this. And then the second lip, uh, he tries to understand interactions between these various events. Uh, so there he tries to uh, uh, provide solutions for how do events influence one another and how do we infer the interactions from observational data sources uh, with uh, across various modalities like a uh, sensor that means numerical data and textual data and what's the role of normal knowledge in event understanding and then thirdly recommending actions based on this uh, extracted and understood data uh, so he tries to formulate like how do we utilize our derived understanding and how can we recommend action what are the events uh, events are like uh, the real world real world events it can be accidents or uh, road delays and like uh, events like uh, delay of uh, that means slowdown of vehicles due to road constructions or uh, accidents or and also uh, due to fogs and rains like situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. musical concerts. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sports events like. Uh, I, I don't I could. know. It could be. Um, did this get folded into Twitter? No, this is not because it is, uh, uh, we did not have the 
sensor data of this kind. And uh, this all I explained earlier that uh, he tries to explain and interpret the average speed and link travel time variations uh, in different links uh, of the road uh, using the events provided by city authorities and traffic events uh, shared by Twitter. Here's an interesting uh, you have a traffic that is uh, slower than it should be for this particular day on this particular time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, did, did we miss it? Oh, uh, we remember God crap. disconnected it. Oh boy. You remember Biplo once shared uh, in the uh, the triple A group, I guess, a mm -hmm. video where a man was carrying a bag load of cell phones and was scamming Google cell phones. Yeah, that's she that's just mentioned that. Uh, uh, you went to uh, I went to watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I think this approach solves that. In my lane, that in my lane. <laughs> okay, good. It's like a James Bond movie, you know, somebody can add a book. <laughs> so, police is testing and someone will be discovered. Yeah, uh, so in his uh, thesis, he tries to combine the sensor data and textual data. Uh, in the sense that, as I described earlier, sensor data includes the average speed and link travel time uh, uh, that are obtained from the file level. And Textual data includes uh, information like each sector happened event or a planned event that are collected from event 
reports and the textual data includes tweets uh, that are reported by the people uh, about these events and then the how part uh, it includes uh, basically uh, three uh, sections on each of the three problems he tries to uh, solve uh, so for extracting events uh, he proposed uh, techniques to annotate the uh, uh, short text messages using sequence labeling model uh, he, there he used the probabilistic graphical model conditional random field uh, for uh, city event annotations and then uh, uh, so the given figure it includes uh, a simple conditional random field where he tries to uh, uh, formulate uh, sequence labeling task using the uh, tweets reported by people and he tries to uh, separate and obtain uh, individual tokens and then tag them and then uh, secondly he uh, invented he's inventing algorithm to consume the annotated uh, short text messages messages with space time information uh, to extract real world events so he used uh, geohashing techniques uh, to obtain the spatial and time information and then uh, he uh, formulates techniques to uh, leverage declarative domain knowledge of locations and event types. And then uh, he includes uh, techniques to extract events from SMS messages. So you remember, I, I often use the example of half full day being complete. So that is, uh, you know, uh, certainly it's a question of learning, but uh, you need to have the knowledge base set. Uh, that is meaningful and interesting as existing. It's also meaningful for the Without that, it's almost impossible. Okay, so uh, secondly, uh, the second main aim is to understand these events that were extracted. Uh, so he uh, formalized the problem of understanding event interactions using Bayesian uh, network structures. And then uh, for that, uh, he uh, utilize the common sense knowledge from concept nets and then uh, uh, he tries to uh, use a Bayesian network structure uh, he tries to uh, understand the event interactions and then proposing a hybrid approach uh, using uh, Bayesian network structures uh, plus a declarative domain knowledge from the sources which I included earlier like uh, File 11 and open street map, maps, concept net, and uh, linked open data. And then uh, he tries to formalize the problem of modeling nonlinear time series dynamics uh, using uh, linear dynamic systems, which are another probabilistic graphical models. Uh, so here in his uh, talk, he described that he have uh, tried using uh, Gaussian mixture models and autoregressive models and Arima like basic models. Uh, to uh, model this nonlinear time series dynamics in traffic scenarios, but they were not e effective. So he explains the nonlinearity in traffic dynamics uh, in his thesis uh, very well. So he tries to, uh, he uh, includes the causes of nonlinear in traffic dynamics, like there can be a Of and I never, you know, able to optimize, you know, how to go to the lab from <laughs> from the from the guest house I used to live in. Same in Delhi. 
Or so, you can share it to Bipla and she can share it. Can you share it? How do you share if you don't have internet? Um, 